Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, bright lights up here means I can't actually see a thing, but I'm sure there's lots of you, uh, uh, lots of you out there. Um, so, um, as Bob says, we, we've got to stick strictly to time. And I've been given uh, just 15 minutes um, in order to give you uh, an outline of um, the consumer electronics market, basically, uh, in Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. Um, I think that's quite a challenge, actually, to do it in 15 minutes, but... Uh, Hey, if us Brits can sort out Brexit in five weeks, then surely I can do this in, in 15 minutes. Uh, okay, I'm not sure if you've uh, uh, come across Future Source Consulting before. Um, we're a research and uh, forecast agency that's been in the business for about, uh, what, 30 years now. Um, we uh, size and forecast markets uh, traditionally uh, in home entertainment, which is um, uh, the area that I focus upon uh, in consumer electronics. Um, but also, uh, so that's a whole range of, uh, of hardware. Here we go. Uh, so um, a whole range of hardware, both uh, audio uh, and, and video as well. Uh, but beyond that, um, uh, uh, B2B uh, products as well. So digital signage, d displays, um, education technology, uh, a whole range of areas which might also interest you as, as distributors um, but aren't actually the subject of uh, this talk because it's, uh, it's about consumer electronics. And the kind of companies that subscribe to our, to our data, uh, they can be uh, uh, vendors, uh, the Samsungs and Apples of this world. They might be chip uh, suppliers. Often they're content companies because we supply information to the, to the movie studios, for, for example. Um, and, uh, yeah, distributors as well. We'd love to do uh, more business with distributors, but um, uh, maybe that's uh, something that we can talk about uh, later on. So, um, yes, during this, uh, this talk, I'll give you um, some context, some numbers. That that's what we do. We, we provide uh, sizing of, of the market and ex try and explain those, those trends as well. So uh, first off, um, we've got here uh, an outline of um, the value of the market as we see it uh, this year, 2019, uh, in Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. Um, and um, these are all the areas that, that we track on, on a regular basis. And uh, you'll see uh, that uh, we've got it pegged at about 185 billion euros at trade, trade value this year. And uh, the good news is that that, uh, that should be up just nearly 5% uh, versus, uh, versus 2018. Uh, of course, it's a kind of a, a mixed bag, isn't it? There's always going to be growth areas and areas of, of, uh, of decline. My brief is to, uh, to mention that the growth areas, and I'll dig down into those in a minute. Uh, of course, the biggest chunk of that pie there, as you'll see, is uh, mobile. Uh, that's, uh, I think, 46%, no, 41% uh, 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 this year in terms of, uh, of, in terms of value. Uh, you'll notice TV displays in, in there as well. There's a bit of growth, we believe, in, in uh, value there. Uh, TVs getting larger and uh, new screen technologies uh, helping things along there for, for average prices. But the areas that I really wanted to, uh, uh, to focus on in the short time I've got are uh, headphones, wearables, uh, smart home, uh, and also wireless speakers, which leads to smart speakers and that whole discussion about the introduction of voice into uh, consumer electronics uh, uh, hardware. So let's start um, uh, with headphones. This is an area that we track tremendously uh, closely. And frankly, it's a remarkable story, isn't it? And, uh, and one uh, story of growth that we believe is, uh, is sustainable. Um, 116 million units last year uh, in, in the region. That's around 3.6 billion uh, at, uh, at uh, trade, trade value. And that's going to keep rising, we believe, up to, well, exceed 5 billion um, in the next uh, four years. There's a number of factors uh, here. One of them, of course, is, is about uh, smartphones, uh, people playing, uh, owning um, uh, more and more um, phones, which means they use them to play out music. And, of course, headphones are a key, um, uh, you know, a key way of enjoying that music, as indeed are, are wireless speakers. Um, the point here, though, is not just about volume. It's actually more a story about value and uh, the richer features that are going into headphones. Um, this year, uh, wireless headphones will actually exceed in volume um, uh, wired headphones. And indeed, a true wireless is, is growing uh, in terms of uh, that volume that will be doubling again this year. So, uh, you know, following in, in the tracks of um, Apple AirPods, uh, basically, no wires. Uh, how cool is that? Noise cancelling, 
um, is, a, is another uh, growth driver for, for value as well. But perhaps uh, more interestingly, looking into the future, as, as we have to, as we do five-year forecasts, we're actually looking at this, um, this hearables concept. And uh, the picture there um, is of the Bose uh, hearphones, which you may have heard about, uh, $499, um, which is kind of crossing that border between headphones and, well, almost hearing aids, hearing assistance device, uh, shall we say. And um, so this is an area that we're looking at quite closely, and we believe that um, with changing um, regulatory uh, scenario, especially in the States, uh, the, the, the idea that these devices can be, can be licensed as hearing, uh, we won't say hearing aids technically, but, but devices that aid hearing, we think this could be a big growth area. And interesting at CES, there was Starkey, for example, um, a company which uh, is, is big in, head, in, in hearing aids, exhibiting at CES for the first time, obviously looking at the headphones market and wanting to move in on that. Meanwhile, we've got headphones companies like Bose and others who are targeting uh, this area. I was told that it takes seven years for somebody to realize um, from the time that they realize themselves they've got a hearing problem to actually having it addressed with hearing aids, seven years. W w that's a big time span where you could actually be using other devices like the Bose product, for example, to augment the hearing. And um, there's, a, there's a pretty cool product I've been hearing about, not seen it yet, uh, being shown around here. Uh, Time Kettle, has anybody seen this? It's uh, uh, earphones which uh, translate, do simultaneous translation. Has anybody seen these? Um, apparently it's been shown th these products at, at the show. So another example there of how headphones, um, you know, their, their functionality is growing, therefore average prices are growing as well. And we really see that, that value uh, ramping up over time. Um, also, um, I suppose it's another wearable product, really, isn't it? Um, uh, the wearables um, market uh, itself. So here we're talking about smart watches, wireless watches, activity trackers, sports watches, uh, and other wearables like um, you know step trackers, that 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 kind of kind of thing. Um, that is uh, you know 32 million units uh, last year in the region. You know, not not to be dismissed um, uh, in terms of value. It grew 28 percent, or at least we believe it will do this year to 62 billion euros. Uh, it's, it's a significant market, but it's one that's transitioning now uh, from the more basic devices um, like the, the, the Fitbit activity trackers, which are very dedicated um, sort of, you could argue, one-trick pony type devices, uh, to being cannibalized by um, uh, smart watches, wireless watches, and sport, sports watches. And even those devices ultimately are, are moving more towards uh, the, smart, the smart watch. Uh, sports watches were 7 million units, uh, we, we expect, this year. Um, and that they will um, still have their, their, their role to play. But the always-on connectivity of, um, of uh, smart watches, we believe, is, is, uh, is the way that, um, certainly in Western Europe, that the, the market will move uh, in terms of uh, value. Of course, Apple's 60% of, of that market now. So it is a kind of fashion thing as well. Um, interestingly, with, with um, smart watches, that Unlike uh, wireless watches such as uh, Fossil, smart watches are quite technical, aren't they? And they don't really fit, you know, the the, the jeweler's traditional uh, kind of channel. Really, um, you, you don't sort of see them being sold particularly well in, in say, sports stores. Uh, you know, where are they best to be sold? It's a bit of a, a bit of a tricky area, and one that needs to be addressed. Um, it's really been restricted to online and like the Samsung stores and Apple stores. That's right, the Samsung stores, which actually sell you a product rather than just show it to you. Um, so there's a bit of a bit of an issue there, which could perhaps put the lid a little bit on on um, on smart watches, uh, unless um, that that gets uh, sorted out. Okay, moving rapidly on, uh, smart home, uh, really um, again tremendous growth, um, 5.3 billion trade value uh, this year, we we believe, um, up 46%. Yeah, 46%. Um, and uh, the chart I'm showing you there, we've we've got um, uh, growth. Um, uh, this year, uh, 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 2018 versus 2017 is in the yellow there, so security and monitoring devices uh, such, as, such as Ring, for example, 75% growth last year, and the five-year growth forecast, the growth forecast through to 2022 is 39% average growth, so really strong growth categories there. Um, power, lighting systems, climate control, you know, they're all re really fi firing on that peace of mind, isn't it, as, mu as much as anything. 
Um, hubs and devi control devices are falling because, well, they're not really required anymore. The technology has moved on and um, it's embedded in, in the other products. Um, you'll notice that there are two products here where you see the, ex we, we believe the, the, the growth will actually accelerate um, in the coming years um, uh, beyond what there has been already. And that's in terms of um, power and also uh, climate control. I'd like to particularly mention about climate control because in the next couple of years we're going to have a lot of energy providers really pushing that very hard and supplying um, uh, devices which uh, obviously aim to, to uh, c cut uh, the expense but also perhaps more importantly the environmental expense of, uh, of using t too, much, uh, too much energy. Um, so those are, those are key areas. And the, the fact that energy suppliers are, are obviously pushing these devices also gives the clue to the complexity of smart home. Um, how those devices get into people's homes is complex, as I'm sure, sure you know. That there's a kind of retail thing going on out there, but there are many other players who want to get into this market and, and are working on this. I was with a pay TV company uh, only last week who asked me very closely about the, uh, the maths behind you know, how much these products get uh, cost to make and you know, how they get into, into people's homes. Insurance companies, um, uh, there's a, just such a range of companies who want to turn it into an ongoing service rather than just a commoditized uh, cheap piece of hardware. So definitely an area to be keeping an eye on. And then we move on to uh, a very strategic area, wireless speakers, again an area we track very closely at Future Source Consulting. Um, it's, it's over the last decade been an extraordinarily strong growth, starting with Bluetooth and then moving into Wi-Fi, and then um, particularly uh, smart speakers. So speakers with voice assistant um, are really pushing that market on. The chart you see there on, on the left shows total wireless speakers. Uh, so uh, we figure in, in Europe we're, we're on about um, uh, uh, 37 million units uh, in, in the coming year uh, in, in the region of wireless speakers in total and you can see that that share which will be smart but we figure it's over a quarter of that market now will actually be smart speakers um, this is a really strategic area uh, as you know I mean how many times have we heard the word Amazon particularly mentioned but also uh, Google um, uh, referred to in, in talks over the last the last few days you know these guys are seeding the market at uh, at cost um, devices which um, uh, are are uh, in, in Amazon's terms uh, if you like they are effectively uh, retail terminals um, as well as learning an awful lot about what's going on on in your home um, and uh, of course Google uh, really learning more about uh, what people are doing in their homes in order they can more effectively target advertising and services. These are really strategic devices. But the music companies love them as well because um, it means that people can find uh, and discover content more easily and therefore they listen to more music and more content generally. You know, as it were, everybody's a winner with these products, apart from maybe other brands, uh, traditional audio brands, who find it very difficult to compete with the, the Amazon and Google um, branded products because they're so cheap. It's very difficult for them. Um, but they're all at it because they realize the importance, the strategic importance of getting uh, voice uh, in, into, uh, into the home. It's worth noting that uh, maybe 70% of, of uh, Amazon speakers are actually sold online. Maybe it would be surprising if it weren't even, even more, more than that. So not only is this depriving perhaps um, uh, uh, high street stores of sales of, of, uh, of speakers, um, these devices also could then compound that because they are if you like retail device as well, they want people to be shopping on them. Our consumer research shows that um, people do indeed uh, buy, buy products, um, you know, buy voice, but actually um, it's n the share, if I remember right, was around 15% of users had actually, uh, were actually buying stuff uh, by voice via, the, via their speaker. But the thing about uh, these speakers is that these, this was really the first manifestation of voice beyond you know, in, in, in computers and, and, uh, and phones. But we're about to see um, a whole um, a parade of products emerging. And we are already, are, are we not, uh, of devices beyond just wireless speakers. Um, there are so many companies who, who want to get in, in on this, but from, from, from games companies right the way through to uh, the service providers I mentioned, e-commerce, uh, it's r right the way across the board. Um, they, they're all aware that voice could really drive up their business, a new channel of communication, if you like, um, two ways uh, w with, the, with the consumer. Uh, so um, our forecast really for, um, uh, for the hardware, which in, in, uh, involves uh, voice assistance, 
Um, here we've got, this is 2019, uh, so games consoles, 60% basically of games console shipping this year will have uh, voice um, in their media streamers like, um, for example, the Amazon and, of course, um, Google devices. Um, wireless speakers, over half. These numbers are worldwide, by the, by the way. Smart home products, 13%. Soundbars, TV sets, set-top boxes. Um, and that's before we start going further into appliances, for example, and as I said, PCs and, and laptops. Actually, and headphones as well. We figure that by 2022, um, there'll be 1.4 billion of these devices in use, which have got voice assistants um, within them. So it's going way beyond um, uh, just smart speakers, and it's going way beyond just one room in the home. It's, it's throughout the home. So I notice that I've now already run out of time, so I don't know if Brexit's been, been sorted yet, but uh, on the assumption it hasn't, I would just say that um, uh, in the short time I've had, hopefully you've managed to highlight one or two of the key areas. There are many other areas of growth as well, um, but there are areas of, of decline, and uh, I just have to wish you good luck in navigating your way through these, uh, these choppy waters. Okay, thanks very much for your time. Thank you.